Hello everybody and welcome to this video <coughs> looking at UK politics focusing on the Liberal Democrats. This is designed for A-level politics and is part of component one. So we're going to look at the Liberal Democrats in a, in a number of different ways. We're going to look at uh, the key bits that you need to know. So you need to know the origins and historical development of the Liberal Democrats and in that we're going to look at the Liberal Party, we're going to look at some ideology in terms of classical and modern liberalism, we're going to look at the period of the uh, the alliance and the formation of the Liberal Democrats, and we're going to look at the coalition, uh, the Orange Book, and then the collapse of the Liberal Democrats, uh, which followed. You need to know about how this has shaped their ideas and current policies, and we will look at the policies on economy, law and order, welfare and foreign affairs. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking at those policies in 2019, because there is currently a leadership election in the Liberal Democrats, uh, which hasn't been decided. So it's hard to exactly know where the direction of the party is going forward. And that's something that you have to keep an eye on uh, even after this video. Right. So if we start at the beginning, so the, the, the Liberal Party uh, was formed in the mid 19th century. Its origins were the old Whig Party. So the kind of first party system you had in the UK was uh, the Whigs against the Tories. And then this became the Liberals against the Conservatives. So it's one of the main parties in the 19th century uh, and, and remains one of the big two until the emergence of the Labour Party in the first half of the 20th century. Traditionally, it favoured free trade, so that's a lack of tariffs when uh, nation, nations are trading, and, and largely was the party of uh, towns and cities, whilst the Conservatives were the party of uh, the countryside, so the Liberal Centre is more the party of business, and the uh, Conservatives more the party of, of the kind of landed elite. Probably the best known Liberal uh, Prime Minister from the 19th century is William Gladstone, whose picture you can see above me, and, and he he pursued a variety of uh, reforms, was, was not hugely liked by uh, Queen Victoria and, and engaged in fairly epic political battles against the Conservative leader uh, Benjamin Disraeli. Part of the Liberal Party in the, the 19th century contained a group known as Radicals and they were the group that were really pushing for political and social reform. Now, there are two major for traditional forms of uh, liberalism. The Liberal Party originally would have been classical liberals. So these these believe in free market economics. So that's um, minimal state intervention in the economy and everything is uh, prices and things are drive by the market in free trade. So that's free trade between nations. So you don't have tariffs or boundaries to trade. And they believe that the state should be as small as possible, but uphold individual freedoms. Other than upholding individual freedoms, essentially the state should get out of the way and leave people alone. And they believed in ideas like self-help, the idea that that people should look after themselves and that if you if you start handing things out to them, you create a dependency culture. Gladstone's government was uh, a, a classical liberal government. It said about uh, trying to extend political rights uh, and educational opportunities to non-Anglicans, so um, to Baptist, Methodist, Catholics. Uh, and so we, we see this, its clear idea was freedom. There's also Gladstone, uh, biggest aim and, and possibly one of his biggest failings was, was in action in Ireland, where he was trying to give a degree of political freedom uh, in Ireland as well a degree of self-rule, which um, failed. Now, modern liberalism is, is different to, to classical liberalism. It emerged in the early 20th century, and it, in its focus on equality of opportunity and uh, social reform, it's different to socialism, because it's not about equality of, of outcome, but equality of opportunity has remained a really a key factor in, in the Liberal Party and then into the Liberal Democrats. So the new Liberal government, uh, which was a modern Liberal government in 1906-1914, brought in things like old age pensions, the nation, national insurance, free school meals and free medical inspections for um, school aged children. It also brought in the payment of MPs. Now, this is all really important because it's giving people a fairer chance. So it means that people from all different backgrounds could become, uh, could become MPs. It, it meant that, that the um, government was helping <coughs> poor people save for catastrophes such as uh, illness or unemployment. It, it meant that uh, the provision was being made for people in old age uh, and pe so therefore people who couldn't necessarily look after themselves and what was happening is is that 
in in poorer families that the, the elderly were becoming a huge uh, burden and huge uh, financial burden on on the uh, younger generations modern liberal ideas can continue to develop through the the first half of the of the 20th century we see uh, the economist john maynard keynes who comes up with a new economic theory which is based that an economy should be run by a government and it should interfere to ensure there is full employment so that is everybody who wants a job can get a job and this is a really important idea in terms of um, uh, tackling poverty and, and, in, and in essence what the economy is all about. Lord Beveridge, who was a Liberal uh, Lord, wrote a report during the Second World War ab about poverty and disadvantage in the United Kingdom. And this became the basis of the, the post-war consensus. And he talked about the five giants that needed to be tackled. Uh, and... <coughs> These included uh, idleness, so it was to do with full em getting employment, uh, want, which is to do um, with poverty and the need for welfare, uh, and then also issues to do uh, with squalor, uh, so improving housing and illness. So it is seen as the basis moving towards uh, the NHS. So we see these really key ideas that come out of modern liberalism, but this doesn't necessarily translate into success for the Liberal Party. Because what happens is a lot of these ideas are taken on by the other two major parties, the Conservatives uh, and the Labour Party, because part of what is known as the post-war consensus. Uh, and so the Liberals remained a, a fairly marginalised third party, whilst the Conservative Party and the Labour Party dominated, even though some of their ideology, you could say, is liberal. If you want more information on uh, liberal uh, ideology, then there's a video... Uh, that um, the details are uh, above. So political ideas, uh, different types of liberalism. So that will give you this in, in a lot more detail. And there should be something you can click on the top, which will give you a link through to that. Right. <clears throat> so the Liberal Party then in the post-war era, it, it, we see Labour governments, we see Conservative governments, but we don't see any Liberal governments. That they, they have some minor breakthroughs in terms of winning more seats in the early 60s and again in the early 70s, but they're not really challenging the big two. The real change comes then in, in the early 1980s, where there's a split in the Labour Party, where the moderate group uh, form a new party known as, as the Social Democratic Party. The, the main part of the, the Labour Party is shifted to the left under Michael Foot and is coming up with some really quite radically socialist ideas. And, and some of the moderate MPs were unhappy with this and they left the party. They, this Social Democrat Party then formed a, uh, an electoral pact with the Liberal Party and they fought the uh, elections of 1983 and 1987 under the, the banner of the Alliance. In 1988, this alliance became a formal single party known as the Liberal Democrats. Uh, and, and the first kind of key leader we see of the Liberal Democrats by itself is, is Paddy Ashdown. So we, we're seeing here a, a kind of in, an evolution of, of the, the, the Liberal Party joined by the SDP becoming the Liberal Democrats. Right, we then went into... Uh, a kind of really interesting period and, and so the young Demo liberal democrat party kind of is fighting for its political position and it has moderate success but it's very much still a, a third or very minor party it has a bit of a breakthrough in 97 where it won 46 seats uh, it, it, it did do this by very clever targeting of seats or where they would go and also the disillusionment that there was very strongly across the country with the conservative government of the previous 18 years and the, the basis of, tar of targeted um, uh, campaigns and also tactical voting became really important for the Liberal Democrats. It's by, by 2005, they'd risen up to 62 seats. And, and what often would happen if, it, if you've got a, um, a, a constituency where people try and block someone from one party. So it might be a constituency where people don't want a Conservative MP anymore. They'll say they, they might think, well, I'll vote Labour. Well, I actually, no, the Labour candidate has got no chance of winning here. The person who came second last time was the Liberal Democrat. Well, vote Liberal Democrat, and then maybe we can take the seats off the Conservatives. And the same would work in, in reverse. We don't want a Labour MP. The Conservatives are never going to win in our area. We'll vote Liberal Democrat. And so you started to see the Liberal Democrats winning seats on the basis of this. Uh, Charles Kennedy uh, was uh, the leader in, in this period, and he, he took a, a kind of very, uh, from 99, and he, he took a very kind of centre-left position. And so the, the 
fitting with the origins of the party with the with, with the uh, with the so uh, the uh, the splinter group from the Labour Party. In 2010, um, we we see the probably the most important uh, election campaign uh, by the Liberal Democrats. They had a new leader by this point, uh, Nick Clegg. Who's MP was MP in Sheffield Hallam, uh, and he fought a very impressive uh, campaign in 2010. There's very noticeable moments, particularly in the TV debates, where you've got the leaders of the other two parties saying things like "I agree with Nick" or literally saying "I agree with Nick" on many occasions. And the Liberal Democrats had a surge in terms of the vote. It dropped off a little bit by the time of the actual um, election, but they do have a significant impact at that point. Nick Clegg is what is known as an orange book liberal, and this is after a book that he and others wrote in 2004, um, and it, it called for a move back towards classical liberal ideas of free market and freedom of the individual, and a move away from some of the more centre-left ideas that the Liberal Democrats had uh, pursued under Kennedy. So we've seen the Liberal Democrats actually shifting back towards the centre, and maybe slightly centre-right, away from the more centre-left position. Now, Clegg spoke about the party's willingness to work with, with either of the major two parties in the run up to the 2010 election, and the result made this a reality. Uh, the Liberals won 57 seats and they held the balance of power. The, the arithmetic in, in the House of Commons with the number of seats meant that really the only viable government was, would be a coalition be, between the Liberal Democrats and the Conservatives. And so that's what Clegg did. Uh, and Clegg's aim was to moderate conservative policies whilst achieving some of the, the long wanted liberal goals and, and proving the party was a viable party of government, which they, they believed or he believed would, would have long term positive um, impact in terms of ele electoral success. One of their demands when they went into the coalition was a referendum on voting systems. The first past the post system ha has always badly uh, affected uh, the Liberal Democrats. Uh, and they wanted um, to make a, a significant change. Now, the party actors really wanted a single transferable vote, uh, but that was seen as being too radical, and so they went for this alternative voting system. Instead, there was a referendum in 2011, but it, the, 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 they lost the vote uh, quite badly. As part of the coalition, the Lib Dems went back on their promise not to raise university tuition fees, which meant the party faced huge uh, backlash from the, the student population, um, which had been a major part of their, their support. And they also became associated with austerity. Now, in 2015, they were really badly punished for this, uh, uh, particularly because a lot of people who had voted Liberal Democrat were centre left. And they were seen to have abandoned these ideas and abandoned some of the principles that had attracted voters in the first place. And so they, they had won 57 seats in 2010. They only won eight in, in 2015. And so we really see the, this, this era of coalition, which Clegg and others went into thinking was going to be the absolute making of the party, actually sowing the seeds of um, it, its destruction to an extent. I mean, it still exists, but we we haven't seen it rise to the uh, the same kind of proportions and same kind of level of seats as it was in before now the most recent leader was jo swinson she she lost her seat in 2019 um uh, and they, they are currently at, at the time that I'm recording this, uh, which is uh, the 20th of, of July 2020. There is a leadership election that is going to take place. Going, is scheduled now to take place next month uh, and between Ed Davey and Leila Moran. And it, so it's, it's exactly it's difficult to exactly pin down uh, the policy areas uh, that they're going to have. Now, they, they have faced... Um, some sig significant issues. They, they've very much been the anti-Brexit, the anti-Brexit party over the last uh, few years. Obviously, this, this was absolutely central to their campaign in 2019. Uh, and although they, they won quite a significant number of votes, again we go back to this this idea of the, of the first past the post system, which really doesn't suit um, uh, the Liberal Democrats uh, really playing against them. 
So I'm going to go through the policies as they are in 2019 election. So it'd be worth you making note and keeping an eye on what happens with the Liberal Democrats over the, the next few months and the next year or so, just to, to make sure you have an up to date version of, of what happens. And uh, it may it may or may not change from what I'm just about to go through. So in terms of the economy, they, they, the Liberal Democrats, and they, this has been a promise that's gone back for a long time with the Liberal Democrats, uh, it, so I can't see this one going, which is a, a penny on income tax to pay for the NHS. So it would raise about £7 billion uh, a year, so about £35 billion over a, 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 a parliament. And they, they say we will spend this on um, the NHS and social care. It would be ring fence. It could only be spent on those things. And they believe that that is something that the population uh, would get behind and support. The um, <coughs> the Liberal Democrats are, are probably the, the most green of the three major parties. So talk about generating 80 percent of electricity from renewables by 2030. Um, taxing frequent flyers, um, so this would mean that people who fly a lot end up paying a, a, a large portion of tax on it, whilst actually the tax cost would fall for people who only take one or two international return flights a, a year. They, they're looking to um, secure up the position of zero hour workers with a 20% pay rise. Um, so. So, for example, if you if you put someone on a zero hour contract, the minimum wage is 20 percent higher than it would be if you put them on minimum wage on a, a, a permanent full time contract. Uh, they said they would in, introduce tough borrowing rules uh, uh, and therefore to, to make sure the, the government didn't get into too much debt. And, but, and they would they would have targeted tax rises to help maintain this balance. And they also talked about massive house building, as all the um, major parties did in uh, the 2019 election. Now, in law and order, the, 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 the kind of the big one for the Liberal Democrats, the kind of slightly mind blowing one is they, they talk about the legalization of cannabis. And they said this would help break the grip of criminal gangs uh, and they would introduce a regulated uh, market for it. Um, they are traditionally very much in favour of prison reform as well. Uh, and they have backed uh, the idea of votes for, for prisoners, not absolutely all prisoners, but for a significant number of them. In terms of um, welfare, we see a real focus on equality of opportunity here. So uh, we we see the idea of uh, free childcare um, uh, for children uh, aged two to four. Um, and again, this is really about getting a, a quality, greater equality of opportunity for women to make sure uh, parents can get back into um, into the workforce uh, and. and also about giving uh, young people an equal chance by providing quality uh, childcare for everybody. And again, on this idea of um, of equality of opportunity through education as big focus education for the Liberal Democrats, we see this promise for a huge amount of um, spending on uh, recruiting more teachers and spending more on teachers and um, teachers pay, which is why you have the uh, the, the cartoon me jumping and shouting yes above me it, so on that particular policy um so they and that it fits in with modern liberal ideas about quality of opportunity to high quality education it, it creates a quality of opportunity foreign affairs well the, the absolute dominant feature of liberal democrat um foreign policy I, I, ideas was to stop brexit um, and and that was front and centre. And there's an argument that Joe Swinson, one of the reasons why they didn't do quite so well in the last election as they would have hoped, is it took it to too, too extreme where there wasn't going to be a second referendum. They were just going to uh, revoke Article 50. And that didn't play um, quite as well as the, the Liberals had hoped it would. Uh, they, they've uh, also they've got, got, as you'd expect, a very liberal foreign policy. They talk about resettling 10,000 refugees a year. Uh, and, and unaccompanied refugees, children being allowed into the UK uh, as well. They, they also were, I mean, for example, if we go back a bit in time, they were highly critical of the Iraq war, which um, was not only carried out by, by the Labour government, but supported by the Conservative uh, opposition at the time. So th they tend to have a slightly different take on foreign policy to the other uh, parties. Right, I, I hope that's been um, really useful to you to give you a good idea and a bit good grounding on the Liberal Democrats. Again, worth keeping an eye out uh, if policies alter slightly, but I can't see them going 
a million miles from what I've just spoken uh, spoken through. Right, please remember to um, give it a thumb up, thumbs up and like the video. Leave me uh, any uh, comments and please, if you haven't done also done already, please support the channel by subscribing and that will also mean that you'll get lots of notifications as I add more and more videos as I go through the A-level politics course. Thank you very much for watching.